Science. This is Pratima and you are watching Planet Physiology. Today we shall discuss about resting membrane potential. Resting membrane potential is defined as potential difference across the membrane at rest. As you know, cell membrane is polarized structure with negativity inside. This degree of negativity varies from cell to cell. For example, in nerve fibers it is minus 70 millivolts, while in skeletal muscles and the ventricular muscles it is minus 90 millivolts. What decides this value of resting membrane potential? It depends on concentration gradient of the ions across the membrane, then differences in the membrane permeability to the various ions and the activity of sodium potassium pump. So let us study these factors in detail starting with concentration gradient. Why concentration gradient exists across the membrane or why the ions are distributed unequally? This is due to Gibbs donan effect. In simple words, it is the effect of non-diffusible anions on one side of the membrane on distribution of diffusible ions. And this ion distribution happens in a predictable way. Let's understand with the example. This is compartment X which is similar to intracellular fluid and here is compartment Y representing extracellular fluid. Both these compartments are separated by cell membrane. Normally, intracellular fluid contains some non-diffusible anions like proteins and phosphate as shown in green circles. Let us assume that initially the concentration of anions and cations on two sides are equal. That means concentration of chlorides and proteins together both are anions is same in compartment X as well as Y. In the same way, concentration of cations in compartment X and Y are equal. But due to presence of non-diffusible anions like proteins in intracellular fluid or compartment X, there is lesser number of chloride ions in the intracellular fluid. Now this concentration gradient for chloride initiates chloride diffusion from extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid and to maintain electroneutrality, potassium ions also diffuse into the intracellular fluid. As a result, at equilibrium, region X has more number of osmotically active particles than the compartment Y. Now, if you take into account the charges on the ions, even though concentration gradient favors chloride influx, negatively charged proteins oppose their diffusion while they attract cations like potassium. Thus, according to Gibbs and Donan, in presence of non-diffusible anion, diffusible ions distribute themselves across the membrane so that at equilibrium their concentration ratios are equal. The same is represented in this formula. At equilibrium, concentration of potassium in compartment X divided by concentration of potassium in compartment Y is equal to concentration of chloride in compartment Y divided by concentration of chloride in compartment X. We can simplify this by cross multiplication and we get concentration of potassium and chloride in compartment X is equal to concentration of potassium and chloride in compartment Y. So this equation is called as Donan equation and it holds true for any given pair of cation and anion of same valency. Now you must have understood that due to Gibbs Donan effect there is asymmetric distribution of diffusible ions across the membrane and whatever are the excess of charges they line up along the membrane. As cell membrane is very thin it acts as capacitor and hence attract opposite charges which line up on the other side of the membrane creating polar structure or electrical gradient across the membrane. The membrane potential at which 
Diffusion due to concentration gradient is exactly balanced by the electrical gradient and hence there is no net diffusion across the membrane is called as equilibrium potential or diffusion potential. The value of diffusion potential can be exactly calculated if concentration gradient for that particular ion is known. Walther Nust derived the equation to calculate this equilibrium potential for the specific ion and for this work he was awarded Nobel Prize in 1920. The equation is E in millivolts equal to RT by Fz natural log of concentration of ion outside divided by concentration of ion inside where E is equilibrium potential or sometimes it is also referred as EMF that is electromotive force in millivolts. R is gas constant, T is absolute temperature, F is Faraday's constant, Z is valency of the ion, then ion concentration outside and ion concentration inside. By converting natural log to the base ten and by substituting the values of constants, we can rewrite the formula as E equal to plus minus 61 into log of concentration of ion inside to concentration of ion outside. Here we have considered valency as 1 and so the Nernst equation is applicable for all the univalent ions like sodium, potassium, chloride etc. Also when we are considering the anion that is negatively charged ion formula uses plus sign and for cations formula uses minus sign. Let us calculate Nernst potential for sodium by using this equation. Since we are calculating equilibrium potential for sodium which is positively charged ion, we are using minus sign in the equation. So we are writing equation as minus 61 log of sodium concentration inside divided by sodium concentration outside. So sodium concentration in the intracellular fluid is 14 milli equivalents per liter and in extracellular fluid is 142 milli equivalents per liter. The approximate ratio becomes then 1 by 10. We can consider it as log of 10 by changing the sign of the equation. So the value of log of 10 is 1 and hence the equilibrium potential for sodium is plus 61 millivolts which means that if the membrane is permeable to sodium, sodium ions will continue to diffuse into the cell till the membrane potential becomes plus 61 millivolt. In other words, at plus 61 millivolts, concentration gradient and electrical gradient for sodium ions are exactly balanced and there is no net diffusion of sodium. Thus, if we know the concentration of any univalent ions, we can calculate their equilibrium potential. As sodium and potassium are physiologically important ions, this table indicates their equilibrium potential. So for potassium ions, equilibrium potential is minus 94 millivolt. Note that these values are as per Guyton. If you understood this concept, kindly let me know what is meant by value of equilibrium potential of minus 94 for potassium ions. Do post your answers in the comment box. Now as we have studied Nernst equation, you must have realized its limitations. First, Nernst potential is applicable to univalent ions. Then, it assumes that membrane is permeable to a single ion at a time. And a third, it does not consider differences in membrane permeability to various ions. Hence, to overcome these challenges, Goldman, Hodgkin and Cards have given another equation by considering the concentration gradient as well as membrane permeability for several ions at a time. This equation is also known as Goldman's equation which is EMF equal to minus 61 log of permeability of potassium into potassium concentration inside plus permeability of sodium and its concentration inside plus permeability and concentration of chloride outside divided by 
permeability and concentration of potassium outside plus permeability and concentration of sodium outside plus permeability and concentration of chloride inside the cell note that the basic equation is same as that of nernst equation but here negative sign is considered instead of plus minus and this is compensated by considering chloride concentration ratio from outside to inside another important difference is consideration of permeability of each ion in deciding the value of resting membrane potential thus goldman's equation considers concentration gradient of all the important ions simultaneously and also their membrane permeability which is the major contributor for resting membrane potential with this background let's study how resting membrane potential is generated we know that potassium is positively charged ion with more concentration within intracellular fluid hence at rest potassium ions tend to diffuse into the extracellular fluid along its concentration gradient if we consider that membrane is permeable only to potassium then resting membrane potential should have been minus 94 millivolt which is its equilibrium potential but in case of large nerve fibers as well as in skeletal muscles resting membrane potential is minus 90 millivolts that means in addition to potassium some other ions must be contributing to the resting membrane potential so at rest membrane is also slightly permeable to sodium ions now sodium is also positively charged ion but its concentration gradient is from extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid so when membrane is permeable to both potassium as well as sodium simultaneously as per goldman's equation membrane potential would have been minus 86 millivolts now if you are noted this value is closer to equilibrium potential for potassium because at rest membrane is 100 times more permeable to potassium than sodium thus it is not just the concentration gradient but also the membrane permeability to the ion plays important role in deciding the value of resting membrane potential and this is the reason in the picture there is only one leak channel is represented for sodium while four are represented for potassium also arrow size is thicker for potassium efflux while it is thinner for sodium influx further if you have noted resting membrane potential is minus 90 but we have got the value of minus 86 millivolt so still there is a difference of minus 4 millivolts so which factor is contributing to make up this difference yes it is due to activity of sodium potassium pump if you remember it pumps three sodium out and two potassium into the cell causing the net deficit of one positive charge within the cell that is it creates negativity inside the cell and hence known as electrogenic pump it contributes for minus 4 millivolt negativity into the cell thus the value of resting membrane potential is decided by electrical charge of each ion their concentration gradient membrane permeability for each of the ion and activity of sodium potassium pump now even though we say that the value of resting membrane potential is minus 70 or minus 90 millivolt in some tissues it's not a fixed value it keeps on fluctuating slowly for example in sa node as well as in case of gastrointestinal smooth muscles resting membrane potential gradually drifts by few millivolts towards positive side so its application you will study as you learn pacemaker potential or the slow waves in gastrointestinal system now coming to the last part of the video let's quickly study how membrane potential is recorded how do we know that the value is so and so for this purpose micro electrodes are connected to a very sensitive and sophisticated voltmeter one micro electrode called as indifferent electrode is placed on the surface of the cell other electrode is recording electrode 
which is created by placing silver silver chloride electrode within a micro pipette containing potassium chloride solution when this recording electrode is on the surface of the cell it does not record any potential as indicated by this zero potential line but as soon as it is inserted within the cell it records a steady potential of minus 90 millivolt as long as it remains within the cell as indicated by this minus 90 line once it is taken out of the cell again it records zero potential so this is how membrane potential is recorded so let's wind up the topic by quick summary Resting membrane potential is the potential difference across the cell membrane at rest and it is generated due to concentration gradient of various ions across the membrane which is created due to donans effect donans effect is nothing but effect of non diffusible anions on the distribution of diffusible ions across the membrane it creates gradient which initiates diffusion of ions and it is the charge on the ions that decides whether the membrane will move towards positive or negative side due to ionic diffusion the value that completely stops diffusion that is the equilibrium potential is determined by nost equation it is decided by the concentration gradient as well as electrical charge on the ion another rather most important factor that helps in generation of resting membrane potential is membrane permeability to various ions as membrane is more permeable to potassium at rest it is the major contributor for resting membrane potential sodium also adds to rmp but it has got minor role this combined role of concentration gradient and permeability is given by goldman's equation due to electrogenic nature sodium potassium pump is another contributor for generation of resting membrane potential as it maintains the concentration gradient for sodium and potassium across the membrane it plays very important role in maintaining the resting membrane potential so that's all for this session thank you for watching and see you in the next video if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.